Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord it never ceases. His compassion it never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord of both of the dead and of the living. We brought him nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. The blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister, Lillian Elaine, for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore mm -hmm. with confidence mm -hmm. pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister, Lillian Elaine. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed for the mercy of God rest in peace. Kindly be seated. We'll have the eulogy by Andre St. Hill Moore to be followed by a tribute by Fernando Carter and a solo by Kim Griffith. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming to celebrate the life of my grandmother, Lillian Elaine Giddens, affectionately known as Mrs. Our family would like to thank the management and staff of Salem Retreat, Reverend Dr. Rogers, Reverend Archer, the members of the Church Army and Mother's Union, and the entire church family, the management and staff of Sonia Craigwell's Funeral Services, the pallbearers and ushers, Miss Marion Cox for her help in organizing and making the programs for the service, 
are relatives and friends who, despite personal challenges, took the time to communicate with my parents through a visit, a phone call, or even rides to church. We appreciate every one of you. May God continue to bless and strengthen you, not only physically, but spiritually. My grandmother was a woman who loved the Lord, who always supported her family and friends whenever possible, and who was a straight talker. Born on November 3, 1924, in Parishland St. George, she was the second of three children. She had two children, Clarence and Vivian, and spent over 75 years together with her husband, Joseph Giddens, before he passed away in 2019. Throughout my grandmother's life, she worked in several different places. Her work ethic could, not be, could never be questioned as you rarely saw her sit down to take a rest. She was always on the go. One job required her to bike from Salters to Brighton Black Rock, starting in the morning and returning at around 6.30 p.m. each night, five days a week. She would do this for several years. It was always important for my grandmother to be an active and busy. But it was more important that whatever she did, it was done meticulously. She set high standards and was not afraid to share her feedback should she feel improvements needed to be made. A sharp dresser, her clothing was often made by her Aunt Millicent Trotman, who would outfit her for many special occasions. Sherilyn recalls one such occasion when her grandmother Millicent was making Granny a dress. Granny stood over Aunt Millicent, providing her with suggestions on how to improve the dress. Finally, Aunt Millicent proclaimed, Lillian, you want me to make this dress? Speaking of dresses, Granny had a dress for every occasion. She, was definitely, she definitely had an eye for fashion. On one trip to Canada, she was getting ready to visit the amusement park Canada's Wonderland. She dressed as usual and came to the door in one of her dresses she felt appropriate for the day. My mother took one look at her and said, Mom, you can't wear that to dress to the amusement park. Puzzled and slightly annoyed, my grandmother asked, what am I supposed to wear? My mother went to her closet and passed her a t-shirt and a pair of pants. My grandmother changed and seemed quite pleased with herself in her new outfit and proceeded to have a great day at the park even going on some of the rides. I have to say, that was the first and last time I ever saw my grandmother in a pair of pants. Never afraid to try new experiences, Granny once headed out to the movies with my mother, her cousin Erlita, and Aunt Millicent to watch the movie A Man Called Peter, which was a book made into a movie about a popular minister at the time. They arrived at the Globe Theater and took their seats. The door of the theater was shut and closed with a loud bang. My mother remembers Granny and Aunt Millicent exchanging concerning looks. The movie proceeded and they all exited the cinema when the movie ended. Aunt Millicent turned to my grandmother and said, Lillian, did you feel the way I felt? Without hesitation, my grandmother responded, like the gates of hell were closing. Safe to say, Granny was not an avid moviegoer. One of, my, one of Granny's great loves was the community she had at her church. My sister Valerie always remembers going to church with Granny whenever we visited Barbados. Granny was an active participant in the St. George Parish Church for many, many years. She was a member of the Mother's Union and a former captain of the church army. Granny was a lover of music and especially the hymns that were sung in church. She eventually became a soloist and could often be seen performing at the church army concerts. Granny never shied away from a good debate. She enjoyed speaking about various topics, especially politics and religion, with her family and friends. She also re regularly shared her opinions on a popular talk radio show called Brass Tacks. My mother would often get calls from family and friends, those who resided in Barbados and th those who were visiting, telling her that they heard her mother on the radio. Over the years, Granny helped take care of many of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. If you asked her about her grandchildren, she would often provide you with the highlights of what each was doing. She was very proud of all of us. My sister Marilyn always remembers how kind she was to her, even when she was naughty. 
like the time she took a bite out of every tomato in my grandmother's fridge. Donna Weeks recalls that she was always, she always said that she never leaves her knees until she has finished praying for all of us and that she loved us. When we were going to, to school, she would always call and ask if we had enough lunch or money. She was always very fussy about the pictures that Aunt Vivian sent her and proudly had them displayed. She was always encouraging and often engaged you and became passionate about most of the topics. Fernando, Fernando Carter shared that his grandmother was a loving and caring, per, caring person who was always concerned about her family. She always packed my lunches very neat and was always concerned that I was able to care for myself. She instilled good values in me and taught me how to share. I never experienced anything but pure love from her. Kim Griffith, another granddaughter, recalls the following. When we would visit, the first thing she would ask is you want something to drink? But before we, Donna and I, could say anything, she would emerge from the kitchen with all sorts of things to eat. She would often say, try and eat something. Within a short time, she would be feeding us again. She was a huge influence in my relationship with the Lord, always reminding me that she was praying for me and that there is nothing better in life than to serve the Lord. Midnight Mass was a regular outing with Gran, and she didn't mind that we fell asleep. She would rather we sleep in church than to stay at home and, boy, I fell asleep each time. One of the songs she enjoyed singing regularly when we visited Gran's house was One Day at a Time, one of her favorites. I can still see the tears in her eyes as she sang it as a prayer to the Lord. We could not help but to join in singing. Whenever you decided to call her, you had to make sure that you had at least three to four hours because Gran's loved a good chat all the while saying, we'll let you go now. We all love and will miss Lillian, Mrs., Aunt Mrs., Aunt Lillian, Granny, and Grands. But we will continue to celebrate her life and honor her with her memories, and honor her with the memories we created together with her. Whenever Granny said goodbye, she would say, I love you, God bless you, over and over again. We love you too, Granny. God bless you. Good, good morning. When tomorrow starts without me, when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven far above. And then I'll have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. For God looked down, smiled at me, and told me, welcome home. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think you're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. I'm only human. I'm just a woman. Help me believe in all I could be and all that I am. Show me the stairway. Just give me the strength 
to do every day what I have to do. One day at a time. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Heaven must be. We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. It's a truth in God's word he has given how beautiful heaven must be the children were playing without sadness and the women will dance without a She's happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Lillian Elaine, and we pray that, having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Kindly be seated for the first scripture reading to be read by Heather Miller. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of peace instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord. And they remain seated as the choir chants Psalm 23, the Cremon version.
The second scripture reading will be read by Shakira Mohan. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 19. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray according to the riches of his glory. He may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. As you are being rooted and grounded in love, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The word of the Lord. The hymn 515, Come We That Love the Lord.
The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, the sixth chapter, beginning to read at the 37th verse. At that time, Jesus said, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Kindly sit, please. Some words from the letter to the Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the first and the part of the second verses. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. This particular passage from the letter to the Hebrews sums up what went before it in chapter 11. For in chapter 11 of the letter to the Hebrews, the writer felt it necessary to recount for his community how God had acted in the lives of faithful persons from the dawn of time. And so he recounted the history of Israel from the creation and highlighted all the great figures that would have held firm to their faith faithfully, even in the midst of great tribulation. And then at the end of it all, he said, because of what we're going through now, let us not feel that we're in this alone. Let us remember that there are persons who preceded us, persons who went before us who endured similar things. And just as they overcame them and were able to hold on to their faith in God, even amidst the changes and chances of life in this world, we can do it as well. As I reflected this morning on the eulogy given by the granddaughter of our sister, and as I reflected upon the tribute given and the songs that were sung, this particular passage came to mind. It came to mind because our sister's favorite song was One Day at a Time. One Day at a Time, remembering that in spite of all that may be happening to you, do not become too perplexed by what you see taking place around you. God is still active in his world, and God will still bring about the transformation necessary for the faithful. And so our sister held firm, and as the, the tribute went this morning, it said, a particular verse of the song said, you know, the days in which you lived were rough, but these days are even worse. But we believe we can get through them if we just face them one day at a time. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews did not know that song, but this is what he certainly believed. He believed that if we look at the examples of those who have gone before us, though they may be gone physically, their witness is still very much a part of what we experience every day. Remember that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Remember that we have the examples of those who went before us. So do not become too perplexed by what the world throws at us because we can overcome it in this life. Indeed, for the funerals of members, I like to sing that hymn 689 in our hymnal. In our day of thanksgiving, one psalm let us offer. For the saints who before us have found their reward. When the shadow of death fell upon them, we sorrowed. But now we rejoice 
that they rest in the Lord. And there's a particular verse that says, These stones that have echoed their praises are holy, and there is the ground where their feet have once trod. Yet here they confessed they were strangers and pilgrims, while still they were seeking the city of God. What that passage is really saying, though they may be gone physically, whenever we come to this place, these walls, these walls still hold the praises they sang. These walls still hold the prayers that they offered. And so we are constantly surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. So we need not be oppressed when we experience hardships in this world. Instead, we just need to do like the writer of the letter to the Hebrews and recount. Recount and remember that there were others who traversed this road before us. And they overcame these challenges. And we will do it as well with the help of God through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. I've said all of that to say that if we were to write the annals of this church and the witness of those who served here, just as the writer of Hebrews wrote the annals of his people, I cannot help but think that we would have to include our sister Lillian Gittins. For our sister was one who served faithfully in this church. She was church army captain. That is a serious position. Because what people do not realize is that the church army was the glue that kept the church together. In the days when the priests did not look like me, and there were no PA systems, people would come to church. Some great sermons would be preached. But one has to really wonder how much of it was understand, understood. It was the church army meetings during the week when these great giants of our faith stood up to expound the word of God to our people in their own language, in the images that, to which they can relate. They the, were the ones who kept the community together. They were the ones who kept the faith at the grassroots level grounded. There were great persons like Lillian here at St. George. I can remember at St. Luke, Captain Brinage. And Captain Brinage, whenever he got up to speak, he would say, I have many things to say to you now, but you cannot bear it all. And then he will go down the road. These people knew scripture like the back of their hand. They had great faith in God, and they were bold in proclaiming this faith. Our sister Lillian was such a person, diminutive in stature, but very tall in faith, vivacious. I can still see her bouncing on church army morning. She used to sit somewhere like in the second or third row there, somewhere right there. And I remember that well because of, of a painful experience I had. One day when I was here as a curate in 2003, I was preaching and our sister fell ill. I still remember that morning like yesterday. After that day, she was not able to come out to church as regularly as she would have loved to. But her faith never waned. When I had the privilege to come back through the kindness of you people and the parochial church council saying that we will take him as our rector. We will we'll see what we can do with him. I had the opportunity to minister to our sister and her late husband, Joseph. And those visits were always special because the conversation was never ended. She would just go on and on and on, recounting the days, singing God's praises. That is the nature of the person we have gathered here this morning in thanksgiving for. That is the nature of the person to whom we do, as the writer of the letter to the Hebrews, let us remember these great people who served before us. But it would be remiss of me if I were to speak of our sister's sojourn in this world and not speak of how her witness in the community 
help to keep the community together, not only through her church witness, but through her family life. As we observe Home and Family Week, it gives us the opportunity to remember persons like Lillian, who were strong matriarchs in our society, who kept their, their, their families together, who ensured that their children traversed a particular path in life so that this community could remain as peaceful as it would have been. Perhaps, as we bid farewell to her, we remember the words of the writer of Ecclesiastes in chapter 1 and verse 4. A generation comes and a generation goes, but the earth remains the same. What that really means is that life will continue to be life. There will continue to be obstacles. There will continue to be those things out there that will tempt and distract us from the path of God. But what we have also is a great cloud of witnesses, the examples of persons like Lillian who can help us to deal with life in this world. And so I've said that to say to you, the members of the family, do not let her memories go to the grave with her. Impart knowledge to generations to come so that though she may be gone physically, the witness and work of our sister will continue to influence this family for generations to come. The work and witness of our sister will continue to transform our society. The work and witness of our sister will continue to have a positive impact in the lives of persons who have never met her. As I reflect upon this witness, I cannot help but think how coincidental it is for us as we forge our new republic here in Barbados to remember that it is the faith of persons like Lillian and the witness of persons like Lillian that helped to bring us to this point. And if we're going to go beyond this point to self-actualization, so too it must be the guidance and the examples of persons like Lillian who will help us through. She may have no great monument erected to her in this country. There'll be no great citation in our city of the work that she did. But for those of us whose lives have been touched, influenced, and transformed by her, it is incumbent upon us to make sure that the great example of the life that Lillian Gittins was in this society continues to be an influence for those with whom we come into contact. And so today, we are being charged with the responsibility Yes, we will mourn, we will cry, we will give thanks to God for the life of our sister. But when we leave this place, we will take with us that great witness that she had in this life and use it to touch the lives of those whom we have been called to interact with in this world. To you, her family, and close friends, we here at St. George extend our sincere condolences to you. And we give you thanks for granting us the opportunity to have shared the life of our sister, Lillian. We encourage you to grieve together as a family. Grieve together because a great matriarch has been taken from your midst. Grieve together because one who, in spite of her age, still maintained a youthful character as she interacted with you. Grieve because one upon whom your smiles depended so many times in this life is gone. But I pray that when the grief of the present time subsides, you will look fondly upon the memory of our sister, Lillian, and remember, as the writer of the letter to the Hebrews did, 
that there was this great person who was a part of our family. There was this great person who was a part of our church. There was this great person who was a part of our community. And in spite of the fact that she may be gone physically, we hold on to the hope and the belief that we continue to be surrounded by her witness. And therefore, whatever life sends, it will be as though we will face it as if our sister Lillian is right here holding our hands, guiding us through the challenges of this life, just as she did when she walked amongst us. We pray that by virtue of her life's work, Almighty God may grant unto her eternal rest and let light perpetual shine upon her and that her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God may rest in peace and on that last day rise to eternal glory. But for those of us who are left, remember that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. So let us lay aside every weight and every sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Let us now stand and reaffirm our faith in this almighty God as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. For our sister Lillian Elaine, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. After each petition, your response is, hear us, Lord. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Lillian Elaine and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, dear friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember before you our sister, Lillian Elaine, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, to the ages of ages. Amen. The Offertory Hymn 496, And Can It Be?
prayer for the presentation of the offerings. Together we pray. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love. For the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of life eternal. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed and not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic rite C. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death, into life. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant, Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. <laughs> Lamb of God, The gifts of God for the people of God. The hymn 458.
in 170, 170. The post-communion prayer, together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction, 
and the pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Kindly stand for the commendation as we commend the soul of our sister to the care of Almighty God. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. You only are the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father. Let us commend our sister Lillian Elaine to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Lillian Elaine, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Lillian Elaine. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Remember, O Lord, this your servant in that awful day when thou shalt come to judge this earth with fire. Oh, what a calamity! Oh, what a dreadful day! When the heavens shall open, and the Lord of hosts shall come to judge this earth with fire. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen.
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you. Lillian Elaine, into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyrs receive you and bring you to that holy city, Jerusalem, Amen. To whom can be turned for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by your sins? 
Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Lillian Elaine, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Lillian Elaine and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son Jesus, Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. A merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the resurrection, receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, for the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And the Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace, now and forevermore.
the hymn through all the changing scenes of life. amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
thou givest, Lord, is ended.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that all people are made in your image and reflect your truth and life. And we especially thank you for the life, work, and witness of our sister, Lillian Elaine, for the love and mercy she received from you and shared so freely amongst us. And now we pray that you receive her into your eternal care in the blessed rest that of your saints in life, that on that last day, we may all share in that beatific vision in that place where death will be no more. Neither will there be pain or sorrow or crying anymore, for the former things have passed away. These things we pray for the merits and mediation of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now to God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you this day in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you.